SpaceX, as we all know, changed the space industry forever when it became the first company in history to successfully reuse an orbital rocket. Before that, rockets were a one-and-done deal. They launched once, then either burned up, crashed into the ocean, or became useless space junk. Billions of dollars, literally, were being thrown away with every mission. People laughed when Musk said he wanted to land rockets and reuse them. They said it was impossible. Even experts in the industry doubted it would ever work. But in 2015, Falcon 9 did the unthinkable. It landed safely after delivering a payload to space. Since then, SpaceX has done it hundreds of times, making booster reuse not just possible, but routine. That's how they slashed costs and became the most dominant launch provider on Earth. But now SpaceX is trying to pull off something even crazier. Landing and reusing Starship, their next-generation rocket, on a drone ship in the ocean. And just like before, the same crowd is saying it can't be done. Let's be honest, it does sound insane. Starship is not just another rocket. It's the largest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket ever built. Standing nearly 400 feet tall when stacked with its booster, it's more than twice the height of a Falcon 9. So naturally, people are skeptical. Landing something that massive, not on solid ground but on a floating platform bobbing in the ocean, seems borderline impossible. But that's exactly what SpaceX is aiming for. And this isn't just speculation or internet rumors. We know it because official FAA documents say so. Over the past year, SpaceX has submitted multiple launch license applications and recovery plans to the FAA for its upcoming Starship missions. These aren't just vague proposals. They include specific language about landing Starship in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and clearly define operational zones that could stretch thousands of kilometers from the launch point. One of the 2024 FAA filings even outlines a detailed roadmap for offshore recoveries. According to that document, SpaceX isn't planning for splashdowns, like what NASA used to do with the Apollo capsules. Instead, it mentions non-splashdown landings on floating platforms, aka drone ships, to enable rapid reusability. These locations are strategically placed to align with Starship's high-energy flight paths, such as those used for interplanetary missions or future Earth-to-Earth -Earth cargo transfers. But the big question is, why go through all the trouble of landing a massive rocket at sea? Why not just stick to the Mechazilla Towers at Starbase or Florida's 39A? The answer is all about safety and efficiency, especially when you're dealing with a rocket of this size and power. Let's break it down. Starship isn't just a little bit bigger than Falcon 9. It's in a whole different league. Fully stacked with its super-heavy booster, Starship reaches nearly 400 feet in height, weighs over 5,000 tons when fueled, and produces more than 16 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. That's roughly double the power of the Saturn V, the rocket that sent astronauts to the moon. Now imagine something goes wrong during descent, even during a relatively controlled landing attempt. If a starship explodes or crashes near a populated area, the damage would be absolutely catastrophic. We're not talking about some broken windows, we're talking about a blast equivalent to a small tactical weapon. That's why landing on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean makes so much sense. The ocean acts as a natural safety buffer. There are no homes, no people, no launch pads, just water. If anything goes wrong, the rocket can explode without putting lives or expensive infrastructure at risk. This is already standard practice with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Most of those boosters land on drone ships hundreds of kilometers downrange, not because SpaceX wants to show off, but because it's safer. Now multiply that logic by 10 and you get the case for Starship. Also, consider that not all missions will follow the same return path. For instance, missions launching into polar orbits or heading to deep space might not line up with a return to Starbase or Florida. Forcing the rocket to fly back to land would require massive amounts of extra fuel. And in rocket science, fuel is payload. Every kilogram used for return burns is a kilogram that can't go toward satellites, cargo, or lunar equipment. By placing drone ships along the return trajectory, even thousands of kilometers away, SpaceX can optimize each flight for both safety and performance. 
Starship wouldn't have to reserve large fuel tanks for landing back at a fixed site. That makes the mission cheaper, lighter, and much more efficient overall. And there's one more key point. Drone ships provide mission flexibility. With floating landing pads, SpaceX can adapt to different orbital inclinations, launch windows, and recovery scenarios. If one landing zone becomes unusable due to weather or traffic, they can reposition the ship elsewhere. That kind of adaptability is critical when you're aiming for dozens, even hundreds, of Starship launches per year. FAA filings support all of this. The agency has acknowledged that SpaceX plans to scale Starship recovery far beyond U.S. borders, including recoveries in international waters. And yes, this approach is very difficult. The engineering challenges are enormous. The ocean moves. Weather can be unpredictable. Starship needs to hit a target the size of a football field after traveling at hypersonic speeds through the atmosphere, while still controlling its descent with Raptor engines firing in precise sequences. But remember, that's exactly the kind of challenge SpaceX has made a habit of solving. SpaceX has also proposed very aggressive flight cadences using Starship. Their plans suggest 44 launches per year from Kennedy Space Center, 25 from Starbase in Texas, and up to 76 annually from Florida, which is currently being rebuilt for Starship. To sustain that kind of launch rate, they'll need a recovery system that's both scalable and flexible. Ocean landings help make that possible. Now, the current recovery plan for Starship at fixed launch sites involves the Makazilla Tower System, those massive towers that catch the rocket mid-air using mechanical arms. These towers are ideal for fast turnaround, especially if the goal is to get the rocket cleaned up, reloaded, and relaunched quickly. But they're not mobile, and that's where drone ships come in. SpaceX expects to combine both recovery approaches, Mechazilla for launches close to home, and drone ships for missions that land far away. This way, they don't have to sacrifice one method for the other. Each approach supports a different kind of mission profile. One challenge, though, is time. A drone ship landing in the Indian Ocean, for instance, would take several days to return to port. That's a lot slower than catching a booster at the launch site. To work around this, SpaceX is exploring something called horizontal starship delivery. This involves using a special fixture to lay the rocket down horizontally after landing. That makes it easier to secure, transport, and protect during the return journey, especially in rough sea conditions. This method is described in FAA documentation and would reduce stress on the rocket's structure, helping keep it in good shape for reuse. It also highlights just how seriously SpaceX is planning the logistics behind ocean recovery. They're not just thinking about the landing. They're thinking several steps ahead. For now, SpaceX is preparing for the upcoming 10th test flight of its fully reusable Starship rocket. The launch is currently targeted for August 4, 2025, according to recent FAA documents and updates from SpaceX. The booster expected to fly on this mission is Booster 16, a Block II Super Heavy that has already completed multiple cryogenic and static fire tests at Starbase, Texas. Originally, the upper stage for Flight 10 was supposed to be Ship 36, but that plan changed dramatically on June 18th. During preparations for a static fire test, Ship 36 experienced a catastrophic failure when a pressurization tank inside the nose cone failed. The result was a massive explosion that completely destroyed the vehicle. No one was injured and no major facilities were damaged, but the loss of the vehicle forced SpaceX to revise the flight hardware plan. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.